Being a good investor is all about making good decisions. In today's video, we're going to look at seven scientifically backed ways to increase your ability to learn, your ability to make better decisions for today and for the rest of your life. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. Number seven is to go for a walk outside. Research consistently shows that exercise is one of the best things you can do for your brain. Exercise slows the decay in your brain's function, which helps you make good decisions even longer in your life. No matter what your physical abilities are, most people are able to go on a walk. And even simply walking counts as exercise. So why outside? Research shows that stress is one of the biggest contributors to people making bad decisions. So reducing stress is extremely important. And one of the best ways to reduce stress, according to science, is being outside. Just going out in nature will help eliminate a lot of stress. And if you combine that with another activity that reduces stress, which is exercise, Putting the two together is an extremely powerful way to lower your stress and increase your ability to think. Last year, I had to make several important decisions, and I was feeling really overwhelmed and stressed about it. So when those feelings would start to overwhelm me, I would just simply put on my shoes, go outside for a 20-minute walk around our neighborhood, and I would almost always come back feeling much, much better. I would encourage you to make this part of your daily uh, practice, and I think it will really help you a lot in making better decisions and being less stressed overall. And number six is listen. While you're on your walk, one simple thing you can do is listen to podcasts or my personal favorite, audiobooks. If you would simply listen to an audiobook for 20 minutes on your walk every day for 365 days, you would read 7,300 minutes worth of books. At a 238 words per minute read speed, which is average, that would be 1.7 million words listened to each year. And if you assume that the average book has, say, 50,000 words in it, that would mean simply listening to an audiobook for a 20-minute period every single day, you would read 34 books per year. My favorite place to listen to audiobooks is on Audible. I actually have a book published on Audible myself, and I really enjoy listening to other books as well. Number five is to take notes, and ideally by hand. After a week, basically 90% of what you hear is lost, so you need to actively recall the information in order to retain it. And the best way to do that is to take notes. And if you keep track of your notes over many years and connect them with each other, you'll find that you have a library, an interconnected uh, second brain, so to speak. And taking notes will do wonders for your ability to think critically and make better decisions in the future. Number four is to take brain supplements. Full disclosure, I am not a medical professional, so do seek your doctor's advice before taking this supplement or any supplements mentioned in this video. There are several supplements that science suggests really help you with your brain function. One of those is matcha green tea. Matcha green tea contains caffeine, which we all know uh, helps us feel more alert and increase levels of energy. Unfortunately, caffeine can also come with recent cortisol, which is your stress hormone. That's why whenever you drink a lot of caffeine, you feel jittery and nervous and so matcha green tea actually contains caffeine, but it doesn't have the same negative effect on you like coffee can. And the reason is that it contains a compound called L-theanine. L-theanine alters the effect that caffeine has on you and makes it more of a smoothed out, more alert. Instead of, you know, kind of a spike in jitteriness and then a crash later, it also has been shown to increase alpha wave activity, which can induce relaxation and decrease your stress levels. Another science-based supplement is ashwanga. I probably mispronounced that. There was a small study done that showed people that took between 250 and 600 milligrams of ashwanga had significantly reduced levels of perceived stress. A 2012 study found that people that took ashwanga reported a 77% reduction in symptoms of depression. And that happened after just 60 days. 
Another supplement is the spice called turmeric. This is what makes like curry and other Indian food orange. And this spice has been called the most effective nutritional supplement in existence. There are tons of research on turmeric and there are tons of benefits from taking it. One of those is a significant benefit in your brain health. Many brain disorders like Alzheimer's disease and depression have been linked to lower levels of a certain protein in your brain called BDNF. Studies have suggested that taking turmeric can increase the level of this protein. So taking turmeric can help to delay or even reverse some of these symptoms associated with these diseases. In one trial, there were 60 people that were given turmeric and the others that were given Prozac, which is an antidepressant drug. And what they found was that turmeric was just as effective as Prozac in reducing uh, symptoms of depression. I've had several companies reach out and want to sponsor the channel, but I've always turned them down because I felt like the, the product didn't align very well with something that I would want to promote. So I've been very picky on a sponsor, and so that's why I'm excited this week to announce that the first sponsor of the channel is a company called Magic Mind, and they produce this little shot that you basically take once per day, and it contains all of these different supplements that we just talked about, and then some, all of them designed to help you reduce your stress levels and increase your focus and ability to make good long-term decisions. It's kind of like a energy drink, but more specifically geared towards your brain and promoting focus and actually being good for you instead of uh, full of sugar and this is different when you take it you feel like you have more of a kind of a, a calm relaxed focus I would say is kind of how it makes me feel at least you know I think it's different for each person so I've been taking it for about a month now and really really enjoy taking it and will probably uh, continue to do that so what I do is just get the little shot it comes in a little shot bottle like this and shake it up really well because it's all at the bottom. So shake it up and then you just take it. And I usually just take it all at one fell swoop. Just chug it. That's the easiest way. Magic Mind is offering 43% off your first order. Just enter the coupon code WINKLEPLEC20 and just try it. See if it helps you or not. You know, Even if it helps your decision making by say 5 or 10% even, that would make a significant difference to your performance at work and potentially your investment performance. Number three on the list is to play chess. In a 2010 study, researchers found that playing chess actually boosts both sides of your brain, both the creative and logical hemisphere. It also helps your brain create dendrites, which are basically the connections between different neurons. So playing chess or other puzzle type games can help your brain form new connections. Number two is mind mapping. Anytime I sit down to write something or create a course or do something like that, I always start with a mind map. And what I find is that it really helps me to link and organize new ideas. And research backs this up. In a study of grad level nurses, they found that those that used mind maps had increased critical thinking skills. But all of these tips so far pale in comparison to what I believe is the number one thing you can do to strengthen your critical thinking skills. And that is by writing. So if you want to know if you understand something, the best way to do that is to try to teach someone else. And the best way to do that is via writing. So writing can help you with both learning, teaching others, understanding whether you understand a concept or not. It increases your communication skills. If you're a good writer, you are dangerous, right? You can do anything in society if you can communicate your ideas in a clear way. Writing has literally changed my life. I wrote a book in 2015 that I expected no one to read, and it's turned into a huge opportunity for me, not just you know, in book sales, which really aren't that you know, meaningful, but it creates a bunch of opportunities for you that you cannot possibly predict. And one of the best ways that I think specifically to investing you can improve via writing is to journal. Investing can create a lot of stressful situations. Imagine you're a retiree relying on your investment portfolio to cover your expenses, and that portfolio drops by 20% like it did last year. Well, that is a very stressful situation and can cause people to make bad decisions. 
One way to counteract that is to keep a journal. Studies show that journaling even 15 minutes per day to overcome stressful situations and traumatic events. So there are seven ways that you can improve your critical thinking and cognitive skills. Let me know in the comments which one you think would be the most effective in helping someone increase their cognitive abilities. Which of these do you find is the most helpful in your own life? And are there anything that I missed? And just a reminder, if you're interested in checking out Magic Mind, click in the link in the description down below. Thanks again to Magic Mind for sponsoring this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.